I wonder. I wonder if it rained up there. I mean, yeah, it rained, rained hard up there. It rained harder up there. Well, according to Stomp, the more the more of the storms were up there. Oh, what, was he up there? No, just he was just oh. watching the weather. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Actually, we had people staying up there, so we would have known anyway. Oh, I would. I was gonna say you may want to send a neighbor to go check on it because I was getting calls from people that, um, even people that never get water, mm. got water yesterday, <laughs> and, yeah. it, and I guess it came in in funny places. We had. I I was out early in the morning. Um, I had a showing down in East Garfield Park, and. Um, um while we were waiting for the uh, you know for the client to show up um it started to, it looked pretty threatening but it started raining about a little after nine o'clock i think a few minutes after 9 a.m and um oh my gosh by the time i got done with the showing i had a lake around my car i couldn't get into my car without without getting in the water because i didn't wear my wellies i didn't know <laughs> i should should have worn my wellies <laughs> so i had water in my shoes so i took my shoes off and was was driving with stocking feet in the car and uh we i was going down lake street like and um there was a low point and i'm going about 30 miles an hour so i wasn't going really fast but you know a little fast and uh I get in the middle of this lake. I thought the car was going to stall. Thank God it didn't. But uh, I think I got. Um, where, I know, where were you? Over in East Garfield Park. You were still over there. Okay, it wasn't yeah. on the way back yet. Yeah. Okay. While, while we were showing the property, it started to rain, and the people pulled up in their car, and we were standing on the front porch, and uh, and I'm like, oh, just wait a couple of minutes. It'll blow over. Well, it was not blowing over, so they finally got out and and. And and you know ran to the into the front porch where we were protected, but um, yeah, I mean it was torrential, and, and and just in those 10, 15 seconds of running from the car to the building, I was I was I was soaked. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. soaked. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it, was, it was pretty heavy at some points. I know the uh, <clears throat> Roger was coming down from Northbrook. Um, he was having to go to uh, Midway to pick up his daughter and uh, was going to come through here and meet me for coffee first, which he did. But it his normal like 20, 20 minute drive or whatever down here on a weekend was like an hour and 10. Oh, um, because the uh, it turns out part of the Edens and Kennedy were flooded. And so the traffic was having to bottleneck to one lane uh to get and get around the water so that's what was mm. taking so long yeah no i mean i i came up lakeshore drive of course and uh yeah i mean it was it was pretty flooded it was we actually had to obey the speed limit coming up lakeshore drive <laughs> everybody was going like 30 40 miles an hour it's like oh my god this is a speed i mean people go 60 70 miles an hour at lakeshore drive <laughs> Yeah. And when I got home, we had two inches of water in our garage, but mm. which has never happened. But like I said, people who never get water were getting water yesterday. So it yeah. was, but the Bears won. Go Bears. <laughs> Big upset against the 49ers. They had they had a front page uh, of the Tribune this morning. They're, they were because it was a big upset, they were playing slip and slide in the end zone after the after the game. <laughs> they were slashing around out there on the field. <laughs> well, speaking of the rain, um, uh, there was an article this morning in Cranes. It was a an interview with Rahm Emanuel. Oh. Mm -hmm. You see it? Um, no, I didn't see it. it. It wasn't a very long one, but it was uh, you know, he's been ambassador to Japan for some time now. And I guess this was his first trip back since since he's been yeah, over there. He's been there that long. I don't think it's been a year. Yeah, but it's his first trip back to Chicago. Right, 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 right. Interviewing him. And um, he was talking about the 
uh, basically that he thinks Chicago has a great position like to if we if the city does it right to like uh, really be an attraction or whatever for many years to come, especially like corporate attraction. Wow. Um, and it was based on the, the, the main reason was based on, he said, we've always had the like advantages of like geography and airport and like different, different things. But he said right now it's water. Oh, and sure. Set us apart. And he said they're having droughts where he said Europe has a major drought. China has a major drought. The West coast of the U.S. has major droughts. And he's like, right now, that's our big advantage. Um, and was even talking about uh, talking with some CEO that had moved uh, a company to, to Dallas, not from Chicago, but had moved a company to Dallas. And he said, well, Rom told him pretty soon you're going to have to come up here to take a shower. And he said, the guy laughed and he said, you think I'm joking? <laughs> right, right. So, um, but we, we've kind of known for a while that, you know, the, the, the access to water here has had some advantage. But I guess with climate change and what's going on across Asia and Europe and everything else that, you know, we've always kind of heard about that within the confines of the U.S., Mm -hmm. But saying that we have a, a global advantage right now. So if we take advantage of it, um, you know, get a strategy together that hmm. it could be really beneficial. So I thought that was really interesting. Well, my girlfriend in England, I mean, they're just dying with the heat there. It's been yeah. a real, and, and I was planning to go see her next summer. Her birthday's in July and mine is in May. We're, we're the same age. And, uh, um, so I thought I'd go to see her for her birthday next July. And she's like, don't come in July. She said the last two or three years have been brutal. Um, hmm. She said, and, and of course they don't have air conditioning. Right. She just built a brand new home. Her, uh, she's been there. It's actually been, I guess it's been three years now, but she didn't put in, because nobody does, it, she didn't put in air conditioning. And uh but, you know, I don't think she regrets it because she doesn't want air conditioning because it's not, she's very into the environment and being green and, you know, air conditioning isn't green. I don't know. I'm like, well, it seems to me a shame that if you're it keeps alive, it might, it might be worth well, it. You know, and I haven't told her this, but there was an article in the paper a couple, maybe a month ago or two about more people actually die from the heat than they do from the cold. Yeah, right. It's actually more deadly. Uh, so yeah, I, I think she made a mistake. That, I mean, if you had the opportunity, because with climate change, things aren't going to get any better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And that's, I guess that's Rom's point too, is, you know, it wasn't like this is just a fluke and it's back to normal. It's like these things are changing in Chicago if we strategize. California properly. right now is having it. I mean, in San Diego, it's like 110 degrees or something. Mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody from San... Well, you and I were talking to the fellow from San Diego the other day. Oh, he, that wasn't him talking about the weather, though. <laughs> but yeah, well, they were talking about the weather, weren't they? How hot it was? <laughs> I think so. Well, well my, my brother lives on the West Coast uh, up in Oregon. But yeah, they're having incredible heat and fires from the heat. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. And of course, California has, as, as Ram says, they have, a, they have a huge energy crisis. There was actually a, a, an article that popped up on Stump's news feed last night now that I'm thinking about it, that was about Idaho. And it was saying that they're in a, um, they're trying to figure out what to do. They're kind of in a dilemma because they've been trying to expand their, um, they've had kind of a boom in, in people moving there, but also they're trying to expand their, expand in their tourism. Mm -hmm. And it's one of their, you know, big, uh, money makers and they're, they're been working on that, but they're, they're running out of water. Uh, yeah, I didn't even think that was a thing there, but in Stump well, that whole it. that whole section of the country is basically high desert plateau. Yeah, you just think of Idaho as being mountainous and rivers and streams and you know wooded, you know, like all of that. But 
I, I guess not enough. <laughs> and we've talked about the expansion in Boise, you know, how big, but, uh, ex, you know, how Boise has exploded in these past few years. Um, but I guess they're at a point now that it's like they, they are afraid to try to work on any of their expansions or, or uh, attracting tourism because they don't have enough water. So um, I didn't even know that was an issue for them. Hmm. Well, I suppose they get their water from an aquifer, right? I don't like, know. Like, I, didn't, like I, didn't like, I just saw the headline and sub headline. That's the only reason I knew. Like the rest of the country. <laughs> I mean, like the rest of that part of the country, it comes from a huge. I figured the aquifers on the West Coast were bringing water from places like Idaho, that that's where it was coming from. But I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe that's, maybe they are. I mean, look at the Colorado River. It's basically a creek now. Yeah. You know, the, the mighty Colorado is just little, because everybody's been using the water. So yeah, anyway, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so what else is going on? I, I, was, I was supposed to work yesterday and everything got canceled because of the weather. <laughs> I, had, I had that appointment in the morning and my open house got canceled. I was supposed to meet a client afterwards, take some photos. And she's like, why don't you come when the weather's a little nicer? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, I just had one showing yesterday afternoon, but it it, it happened. So that was fine. Oh, that's good. Really, unfortunately, the view wasn't great because it's a, a real view place. Mm. But um, with the, it was raining at the time so it was hard to see the view but otherwise it uh they actually came and showed up on time and all of that so mm, nice. yeah, yeah. Hmm. interesting huh. so um what else is going on uh i don't know i'm going to try to get out and get my usual it was still raining when i got up this morning when i usually take oki out and go on our our long walk through the area but uh then by the time it finally i thought it stopped and stump went to work and called me and said it's still like all misty and stuff yeah it's supposed to rain all day wednesday's supposed to be beautiful so i'm gonna go back well, for here it's supposed to be no there's it's supposed to stop raining now so but that was shortly before our call so it's supposed to stop for now but oh well i think there's supposed to be showers on and off during the day yeah, just depending on where you are, but my location is supposed oh. to be clear. So oh. after we've, I've got a uh, AEM call after this with Dylan, and then I'm going to go and do our walk then. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that sounds like a good plan. So yeah. anything coming up this week? We, we start now I'm trying to decide if I wear pants or shorts because I've been wearing my my walking shorts every day, but now I'm like, is it too cold for? Well, it's, yeah, it's not warm out. I mean, it got into the fifties over the overnight. I'm just like, yeah, it's uh, supposed to be a high of 60 today. It's well, according to my, my phone, it says it's 57 degrees here right now. Yeah. I and I have some kind of a weather alert here. River flood watch. They're worried about the rivers flooding. Mm. Yeah, high of 64 and a low of 59. They say it feels, how can I have a low of 59 and it's 57 degrees? <laughs> That's why I use dark sky because it's actually your, your geolocation, not the whole city where they take, they like do the average of everything. Well, this is, this is uh, the weather station here for my zip code. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, uh, so it's, you know, it's right here. But it's not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> apparently not apparently not but anyway yeah you might want to wear some real pants i don't know of course you're always you're you always run hot so you'd probably be fine in yeah, your I, I saw people out running yesterday in this in the rain yeah i saw people um like biking doing like divvy bikes and stuff in the pouring rain and um yeah well you hard. know when i used to run i used to run i did i never let the rain, if it was a downpour like yesterday i don't think i would have run but if it was like a little bit of rain it never i mean if you're dressed for it and, and you're prepared for it you know it's like you start running you start sweating and get wet anyway what the hell that actually feels kind of nice <laughs> but uh but yeah it's when you're dressed up and you're trying to work and look good <laughs> it's a problem <laughs> we went up to your favorite uh urban vegan last night uh, oh okay 
like our favorite place and we hardly ever get there but we made it up there last night what did you end up what did you end up getting ordering uh i got panang curry and uh pod Winson, the, the cellophane noodles mm. there's yeah. a big article uh this month's um uh chicago magazine i just came in the newspaper yesterday it's actually seems a little late doesn't it shouldn't it have been out already but anyway or a little early one or the other but it's, uh, it's probably october because they come early yeah uh, yeah yeah so it's got it like 101 fun things to do in chicago it's kind of kind of fun there's some fun stuff in there um but they talk about all the all the uh the new restaurants that are opening and uh, big article about Alinea in there, uh, but uh, yeah, it's kind of kind Linea. of Alinea. Yeah, is that how I, you I, say? It? I don't know about Alinea. Oh, Alinea. <laughs> oh, it said Alinea. Well, I've never been there, so <laughs> it doesn't sound like from the article I'm ever going to go there. It's uh, it's uh, if you go up to the salon, it's like six hundred dollars, and if you sit down in the I can't remember what they call it, the gallery. I think that's like nine hundred dollars a person. Yeah, you know, it, it would be wasted on me. The most famous restaurant in Chicago, but one of the most famous in the world for many years now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, according to this article, they're kind of resting on their laurels now. Oh. <laughs> Although it's the only three three star Michelin restaurant in Chicago. Yeah. 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 But. Uh, all right. Well, we're kind of we're kind of a slow news day. All we have to talk about is rain. <laughs> Although well, actually, the many, many amazing topics that we usually have. <laughs> yeah, actually, I did just before we got on our call, I did have a really interesting phone call with a mortgage guy who does mortgages for a credit union here on the north side of the city. He's their mortgage uh, guy. And they do portfolio loans. And um, so he can do like 90% uh, financing with no PMI and things like that. So I'm kind of excited to, to, to hook up with him because it's hard to find portfolio lenders. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, yeah. so who will, who will do things a little bit. And a portfolio lender is what? Uh, a lender that doesn't sell their their loans on the secondary market to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. They keep their loans like in the old days. This is a credit union, of course, so it's like the old days where they they take in deposits from their from their depositors, and they actually have to do something with the money, and like like it's a wonderful life, right? In the movie, it's a wonderful life. That's what they're doing. They're loaning their money out. To, to their neighbors and that's that's what this credit union is doing so which means that they don't have to they don't have to adhere to the a, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines, guidelines. Yeah, they have so their they own guidelines they can make up their own guidelines and do it the way they want to do it so it's kind of, it's they're hard to find but yeah. I got one I got a resource <laughs> all right well good to see everybody all right have a good week all right bye <laughs>